fingers down in there and start around for about 10 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay, you're good. What do I do with that chlorine? That OTL. There it is. Okay, so now we're going to test both these for chlorine, just like we did in that chlorine tester, right? Mm -hmm. We're going to put five drops in each one. We have this one that you had your hand in, right? This one, yeah. Okay. So one, two, three, four, five. Bunch of chlorine, mm -hmm. right? See, I like the big glasses they're using. Do you take those in or you use your customer's glasses? We use customer's glasses. Yeah. You notice the difference? Yeah. What do you notice? Just with 10 seconds. One, one, one looks like the beer I want to have. I'm just kidding. Yeah, right. yeah just 10 <laughs> seconds of uh, your fingers being in there, stirring it around, it picks up you absorbed it that quick. Yeah. You absorbed it that quick. You can imagine, right? When you put your baby in the bathtub <coughs> or you take a shower, how much chlorine you're actually absorbing during that whole time. It's mm -hmm. crazy, right? Mm -hmm. So first part of this, we talk about the problems with the water. The second half, we'll talk about the benefits of having a system. Before we do that, I'm gonna run through real quick who we are and where we came from. We talked about the hard water stuff. I mean, it's gonna tear up everything that's in your house. There's no doubt about it. This is a hot water heater. It was 10 years old with a 10 grain hard water, very similar stuff to what you have. It's a little tiny picture, but if you look at the bottom, you're gonna see this uh, really big kind of brick at the bottom. Right? That thing is like literally like a slab of concrete at the bottom of the hot water heater. The problem with this is that not only is it going to corrode out the bottom of the hot water heater, usually that's where they leak from, right? You come home, you got this big puddle of hot water on the floor. Two, you got to heat through that brick to get to your water. It's like if I were to take a big stack of tiles and put it on your stove and put a pot of water on top of that tile and turn, the, turn it on, it's going to take a lot longer, isn't it? To heat through all those tiles to get to the water? It is. Mm -hmm. One of the really cool things about our system is it's going to eliminate that brick doesn't do it overnight. But our water is so clean that it's gonna eat away at that problem to a point where it actually saves you on your energy cost, which we'll talk about later. And not only is it gonna clean up the hot water heater, but rinse the toilet, build up the showers, it'll do that without you doing anything at all. Um, tears up everything that it touches, irons, coffee makers, dishwashers, pipes, faucets, fixtures, um, swamp coolers, anything that water runs through, it's gonna cause problems. Makes housework harder for sure. There's no doubt about it. A lot of people don't realize the hard water is what causes soap scum. If you don't have any of this stuff in the water for the soap to bond to, you don't create that buildup, right? And soap scum causes its own set of problems. It clogs your drains, clogs your pores, these build up in your hair. They actually make shampoo, right? It's called chelating shampoo, designed to get soap scum off of your scalp and in your hair. But it's a result of the hard water. If you don't have hard water, you don't have soap scum. There's nothing for the soap to bond to. Chlorine we talked about says taking long hot showers is a health risk. There's two reasons for that. You're showering in swimming pool water. It's going to dry your skin out, right? The other problem is it says the chlorine evaporates from the water and is inhaled. It can also be spread through the house and inhaled by others. This is especially concerning for people with upper respiratory issues such as asthma and emphysema. You breathe it in. It's bleach, right? When you take a shower and you create steam, you have chlorine in the air. And everybody's different. Some people get headaches. Some people get lightheaded. Some people get nauseous. Some people get nosebleeds. It really depends on who you are and how you react to it. But breathing in bleach isn't good for you. This is about drinking it. It's from the US News and World Report. It says drinking chlorinated water may as much as double the risk of bladder cancer. The American Medical Association, 10,700 new cases of bladder and rectal cancer occur each year from the presence of chlorine in our drinking water. Two times the number that die in fires are more than those killed by guns. New research indicates chlorine may be the prime cause of cancer and heart disease. Um, they're linking it to acid reflux, colon cancer. It, again, it's a necessary evil, right? We gotta put, I'll pick swimming pool water all day over E. coli, but they gotta, they leave it up to you to take it out when it gets to your house. Um, it's a necessary evil, right? Arsenic's a problem in New Mexico. I don't know what you guys have going on in water with California. I don't know if you guys have arsenic There's issues, some, uranium some issues, areas. right? Both. Um, I would talk about it. If it's a problem in general, I would add it. Yeah. But um, arsenic in groundwater is largely the result of minerals dissolving from weathered rocks and soil. Several types of cancer have linked arsenic in the water. Um, studies have linked arsenic to diabetes, respiratory and cardiovascular events, birth defects, even very low concentrations of arsenic in drinking water appear to be associated with high incidence of cancer. This one's from the EPA. It says effects of arsenic in drinking water include, but are not limited to changes in skin, alterations in gastrointestinal, cardiovascular, hematological, pulmonary, neurological, immunological, and reproductive developmental function. It's not very good for you. I hate going through this stuff because I feel like I'm trying to scare people. <laughs> um, it's just unfortunately what we have in the water here, right? EcoWater has been around since 1925. We're the first water treatment company on the planet. Um, we are a member of Berkshire Hathaway, Warren Buffett owns EcoWater, same guy that owns Hyatt, Geico, Fur Loom, Hellsberg Diamond, Santa Fe Railroad, and a bunch of other companies. Super proud to be a part of that group of companies. 
pioneers in the water conditioning industry. That was our first system back in 1925, our first patent. We still hold that patent today. Today we have over 30 patents on our system. We're one of the only residential water treatment companies to have patents on a system. We're very proud of that. There's really nothing else out there that can do what our system does. Um, one of the world's largest manufacturers of residential water treatment systems. There's over 120 nationwide. There's over 350 worldwide. Um, we do very well here in Albuquerque. We're always in the top three or four in the country. Um, and we do well because of the quality of the water. Um, we got really bad water here. We also run our business well, but we also do really good because of the quality, really well because of the quality of the water. One of the reasons we talk about how big we are, we're all over the world, is if you guys decide, decide to get a system and you move, it's got a lifetime warranty, right? I don't care if you're going down the street or across the country, you need to pick up the phone and call us. If you move, we'll come get your system and take it to your house and install it for you. International headquarters is in St. Paul, Minnesota. Um, that picture doesn't really do it justice. It's about six acres under one roof. It's a big place. All of our systems are made there. All of our systems are made in America by Americans using American parts. We don't outsource any of it. It's all done right there. Water in the body brings us back to this stuff. Um, this takes a little while to settle out, right? Kind of looks like a cloudy ice cube though, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. That's what you guys are drinking. The problem with this, right? Because there's all these misconceptions. I mean, there's calcium and magnesium and iron and manganese. It sounds, sounds like a multivitamin, right? It doesn't really work that way. Unfortunately, it's all inorganic. Your body doesn't absorb that stuff. Most of it, about 95% your body can't use. Um, some of us are built in such a way where that's really not an issue, it'll go right through you, but if you've got kidney problems, it's a problem. So one of the leading causes for kidney stones is the water that we drink. If you look at the anatomy of a kidney stone, it's calcium and magnesium and iron. It's the same stuff that's in your water. There's nothing in that water that's good for you, except for the water. And you hydrate quicker. Your body actually uses this water between 20 and 30% faster than it uses this water. Noticeably faster. Here's our system, it's very smart. <clears throat> it's got a computer on the top. The computer does a number of different things. It'll tell you, how much water you're using daily, weekly, monthly. Um, it tells you how many pounds of hardness it's removed. Um, it's got a remote control. We put ours in our, our bedroom, but you can put it anywhere you want to. It's a wireless remote. It tells you everything that that computer tells you on top of the system. The most important thing I get from that remote is it tells me how many days before I need to add potassium to my system. Right? So it'll say you know 210 days or 80 days or 30 days or whatever the case may be, but um, I'm not going to go take a shower one day and realize my system's not working because I didn't go out and check it. Second part of the system is this guy right here. It's a reverse osmosis. This is in addition to the big system, right? This water looks very clean, doesn't it? Other than the yellow color, mm -hmm. it's like clean water. There's nothing floating around in there. Um, and it is, it's much cleaner than what you guys have over here, but the big system can't get everything out of the water. Um, most of it, the heavy metals like arsenic that we talked about earlier, uranium, lead, right? Those things don't hurt your skin when you shower. They don't hurt your plumbing and appliances. They don't hurt your clothes. But for drinking water, you want to get that stuff out. And this reverse osmosis does it. If it goes on your sink, there's a little spigot that, that goes on your sink here, or in your granite. Um, and it gives you an unlimited supply of better than any bottled water you can buy at the store. Fresh squeezed at your tap. It's what we use for cooking and coffee and juice and tea and drinking. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Consumer protection plan. Um, we have the ISO certification, International Standards Association. It's a big deal. A lot of people don't know who that is. If you have anybody in the aircraft industry, they do. Um, ISO is a big deal. We're the, one of the only water treatment com companies to have ISO certification. We have the Water Quality Association's Gold Seal. We're backed by the FCC and Consumer Electronics, Underwriter Laboratories, Canadian Standards Association, and the National Sanitation Foundation. This one's kind of a big deal. You have to have that if you're putting your systems in restaurants and hotels and hospitals. Um, guarantees no bacteria growth. Most people have which one? In National South. Sanitation Foundation. Yeah. Um, most people feel comfortable doing business with a company with those kind of credentials. And then you got the benefits. This is the fun part. Skin and hair, I can't really explain. I'm going to show you guys, but it's a nine-day difference on your skin. Very, very noticeable on your skin, your hair, your scalp. You don't get razor burn. We'll talk about all that stuff. Um, everything's cleaner. I mean, there's just nothing in the water to leave anything behind when it dries, so you don't have all that buildup on your dishes. Um, they come out of the dishwasher looking new instead of cloudy and frosted. Right? There's not rings in the toilet and build up in your showers. They're not the soap scum that you guys deal with on a daily basis. We'll talk about that stuff too. Everything's just much cleaner. Laundry's a big deal too. A lot of people don't equate the laundry with the water, but this is what you're washing your clothes in, right? Swimming pool water along with this sandpaper. Just shred your clothes, right? And the chlorine's gonna fade colors and tear up your fabrics. Um, the lint trap on your dryer with our system will be 50% less full or you change it 50% less than you do right now, which means your clothes last longer and they look better and they feel better. You don't have to use down your dryer sheets. Um, my wife does. She rips a piece of the, the bounce off because it needs to smell good. 
but you don't necessarily need it to soften up your clothes, right? Everything will come out softer, brighter, um, whiter, and colors don't fade. Um, the last thing is the health. This is probably the biggest piece of the puzzle to me. Um, I've been doing this for a long time. I know it's in the water. Like, I could spend three hours in someone's house scaring the shit out of them, talking about the problems with the water. Um, it's the health thing. It's a healthier way to live. It's a healthier lifestyle, whether you're drinking it, um, or you're cooking with it, or you're showering it. It just gives me the peace of mind knowing that I'm giving my family the best possible water. So we're gonna talk about some of this stuff. Um, when you shower, what kind of soap do you use? Bar soap, body wash, or both? Dove. Dove? Dove soap. You like the bar soap, right? Yeah. If you go to a doctor or dermatologist, um, and you tell them that you have skin issues, they're typically gonna tell you to use a bar soap like Dove or Ivory. Right? They're pure soaps. They're gonna tell you to steer clear body wash. Mm -hmm. Body wash has um, what we like to call feel-good chemicals. Right? They're sudsing agents, which is designed to give you this really heavy lather. Right? They're acids and softeners designed to break down this water so that you get that lather. It's really, really harsh on your skin. <clears throat> they also use these really harsh fragrances. Most of them are built with alcohol. Um, really, really drying on your skin. I mean, they make you smell good for an hour or two, but they're really, really harsh on your skin. And tell, instead, they're gonna tell you to use a pure bar soap like, like Dial right, or ivory or dove. Um, if you go look at all the ingredients on your laundry soap, or you look at your dishwashing detergent, or you go look at your shampoo, right, it has all the same stuff that this little bar of dial has in it, along with a million <coughs> other really harsh chemicals. Those chemicals are literally designed to soften your water chemically. What I want you guys to see is how all your products work with the water. And using a bar of soap like dial or ivory is a really good way to do that. So come up here real quick, can you? Real quick, mm -hmm. you take your phone. I wanna make a bubble bath. Okay, so the whole idea behind a bubble bath is what? Bubbles. Bubbles, right? <laughs> You're not gonna wash your hands yet. I promise okay. you will, die, but I want you to see this. So we're gonna rinse this out because I don't want any hard water in there because it'll completely change the test and I'll show you that too. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a bubble bath with this bar of soap and we're gonna use my water. And all I'm gonna do is run this underneath the water and I want you to tell me the first thing you notice. Bubbles. Bubbles, okay. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna add quite a bit of this soap. Bubbles? Bubbles, right? And then we're going to let it run. Well, you're going to notice where that water's running in that's creating a bunch of bubbles, right? And again, all I do behind the bubble wrap. Yeah. The more and more I let that run, the more and more bubbles we get. In fact, if I pull that to the side and we let that run, you can see it's making new bubbles. This is what you want, right? You don't want your soap to bond to or attach itself to the stuff in the water. You want it to stay separate, and that's what you're seeing right there. Mm -hmm. We turn this off, and we move these bubbles over to the side. You're also going to notice that water's clear. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. I stick my fingers down to the bottom, you can see the tips of my fingers. Mm -hmm. If I threw a quarter in there, you know it was a quarter, right? Mm -hmm. It's clear water. Mm -hmm. Now watch what happens when we add your water. First thing you notice, no new bubbles. No. And the bubbles that are there, what happens to them? They go away. Mm -hmm. That water's not clear anymore. It's super cloudy because what happens is that soap starts to bond to or attach itself and stuff in the water and you create that soap stuff. Here's the crazy thing, that's my water and your water mixed together, right? What I want you to see is your water by itself. <coughs> so we're gonna do the same thing. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. New test. Mm -hmm. Right, what do you notice this time? No bubbles. No bubbles. Right? You can turn this up a little bit. Sorry if I'm getting you wet. No. Oh. Right, you got no bubbles. And the more and more I do this, the murkier and murkier it gets, right? Again, what's happening is that soap is just bonding to the stuff in the water and you're creating a soap stone. So, if we turn this off, instead of bubbles, what you're gonna notice is this stuff that kinda sits on the top of the water. And if we pull this stuff to the side, and we get it on the edge of my hand here, you're gonna notice all of this stuff, which is your soap yeah. stone. Yeah. Right, this is the same stuff that clogs your drains, clogs your pores, these build up in your clothes, right, gets in your hair. Can't see anything. And you can't see anything down there, right? I wanted you to see that. That's a good one. Because when you wash your hands, it'll make a lot more sense of what's actually going on here, okay? So, you got, the, you got the dry skin? Do I have dry skin? No, I'm soft. Right? No, you have soft? That's right. <laughs> Here's what I want you to do. All right. The whole idea when you take a bath or shower is to get all the dirt and oil off your skin, right? Mm -hmm. And then to rinse the soap off. Mm -hmm. That's the idea. So what I want you to do is take that bar of soap. I want you to get a crazy good lather. Get them really, really wet underneath there. Let's scrub them really, really good. Okay. Feel like they're clean? Yeah. You know, you scrub front and back. We get the whole hand. 
Like I'm going to surgery. You gotta go, that's right. I won't make you go up to your elbows, but yes. That's, that's a good hand wash right there. Okay, so here's what I want you to do. I just want you to take your right hand, okay? Leave your left hand separate. I want you to wash your right hand underneath my water. Am I doing the hokey pokey? <laughs> if you're up for it, I, I'll, I'll do it with you. I'll do the hokey pokey. Okay, run your fingers up and down your palm like this, underneath the water. Feels off? Mm -hmm. Feels like you can't get soap off, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. You can do that for an hour. It's never going away. Slimy, but it's smooth. Stuff. It's smooth. Here's the thing, right? You could do it forever, and you're not used to it. <coughs> but you want to get your whole hand. Make sure you get your wrist and the back of your hand and all that. You could literally do that forever. It will never go away because what you did is you unclogged all the little tiny pores in your hand, and your body's creating a lotion. Feels like lotion, doesn't it? Because mm -hmm, yeah. ultimately, that's what it is. So like what it does. So now, once you take your other hand and do what you do every day, I want you to wash underneath the tap water. Right, and I want you to run your fingers up and down your palm. And you're gonna feel this squeaky, clean, all the soaps off feeling right about now. Mm -hmm. Right, tightens up, feels like the brakes got put on, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. So what you did like is you- Like sticky. Sticky. You clogged every pore in that hand and your body's not breathing. It's not producing that I want motion. a water softener. <laughs> Here's what I want you to do. I want you to take that hand, and I want you to smell it like this. Like cup your, cup your nose a little bit. Should smell faintly of ivory, or dial. And I want you to smell that one. So it almost smells like a bar of soap. Mm -hmm. And if somebody wants to argue with me, I'll make them taste their hand. Mm -hmm. I will. Mm -hmm. But it's a big difference. You can dry these off. Yeah, it is. But here's the cool thing, mm -hmm. right? Here in about five minutes, the hand that you washed underneath my water mm -hmm. is going to feel like you put the best lotion in the world on. Okay? The other one's going to feel really, really dry and sticky because you literally clogged every pore in that. Like that the hotel hand. this morning. And you, exactly. Mm -hmm. Right? Wouldn't it be nice to get out of the shower and feel that soft every single day? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Honey, buy me a water softener. <laughs> okay, you're good. You can go set. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, it, you can feel it. Yeah. I forgot to do this, but I'll just do the whole demo. Or just this one? Well, want to see the whole demo. I'm just going to do it for them real quick. Mm -hmm. Might as well, don't you think? Yeah. This, this, guy, this is the demo you guys do, right? Pretty much, yeah. Well, what we're supposed to be doing. This is what they're trained. Yeah, they're trained to do. But they're using with the, the same corners? With the same yeah. Theatrics. Well, you can tell by percentages. The guys that close hey. at 40%, no, no, no. yes. Can, no, that's not how you can tell. You can tell by the time they text into the house and the time they text out if they're doing our demo. Here's the thing, right? If you miss one of these things, it could cost you the sale. Exactly. Seriously. One of these things could cost you the sale, which is like if you cut one out or two out, um, you're doing yourself a disservice. You're already in the house. We already paid for the appointment. If you cut one of these things out because you're trying to get to another appointment, it's crazy. Well, usually because they sometimes they think it's not important or the customer's not going to care about know, it. You don't know what the... Oh, I know. You don't know... The hot buttons. Look, maybe nobody cares about anything, but they care about their bowl. Maybe nobody yeah. cares about... You, you don't know. Yeah. You have to do the whole entire demo. I thing. agree. See, and that's what we monitor on our text in and text out. We know how much you shortcut our demo. Now, if that's my lead, do me a favor. Do it from A to Z the way we taught you. Because you'll sell 44 out of 10. Okay, if you cut it, you're not. 44 sell out of four 10. Out, Those are good. Out. You're not going to sell. Four great out numbers. Four, great four, 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 out four out of 10. 44 out of 10. No, four out of 10. I know. I heard you. All right, so listen, I borrowed this bowl from you guys and I needed a fresh water washcloth, what they have right now. I'm just going to rinse out this bowl because unfortunately with your water and the way the soap works, you're going to have soaps come and hard water residue and I want this to actually be a clean bowl. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to soak this clean washcloth that you guys washed here at the house with your detergent. And by the way, when you teach your reps how to do this, there's a way to do it. You completely mess it up. Um, what you want to do is get your rag in here and you want to get standing water on there like this. Right? Make sure that there's like standing water yeah, in there yeah, yeah. and set it off to the side. Okay. Right? Let it soak. Leave now it. you ask them to get their towels because you presume they their have soap in there. Yes. Already. Their, their hand towel, their face cloth, because they've already washed it. You want to brush the laundry face cloth or hand towel. So they Correct. have a bunch of soap in there. Yeah. And while that's soaking, I'm going to do a little glass wash. Um, who, does the, who does the dishes? I've actually stopped asking that question. It's in our script. but. These days it gets people in trouble. Um, you do the dishes. It's good for you, bro. Yeah, good for you. It's my job. Yeah. Um, what you guys are going to notice is that you get spots on your dishes. Everybody does with Albuquerque water. There's no doubt about it. Um, one of the easiest ways to see how clean something is is just to run these glasses underneath the water. Okay, so I need to borrow two glasses. Usually these are the same glasses that you do the chlorine test with. Make sure that they're clear, smooth glasses. These will work, but like I'll get wine glasses if I can because they work the best. 
<clears throat> but you want to get these and you want to set two of them in front of them. Now the first thing that you guys are going to look at on those glasses is that the water's not just sliding off of them. It's a smooth glass. In reality, that water should just slide off the side of the cup, but it doesn't. And the reason it doesn't is because you created the soap scum and this hard water residue that's literally like these little tiny microscopic ridges on your cup, and it causes surface tension. And that surface tension is what holds up those drops. Now, if I let both those glasses sit there and dry, you're going to have hard water spots all over your glass, aren't you? Mm -hmm. What I'm going to do is I'm going to wash one with the eco water. Now, here's the thing. When the water's in the clouds, it's pretty, it's pretty clean, right? We actually say that it has superpowers when it's in the clouds. Water's like the universal solvent. Right? It, it will clean everything. And when it's in a pure form, it literally is pretty amazing. <clears throat> but unfortunately, when it rains, it picks up a little bit of everything it touches. It's literally like a magnet. Right? It grabs onto everything that it touches. Well, if you guys can imagine a magnet, you guys have probably heard of Harry Singer say it. Dogs, right? logs, and uh, uh, what is yeah, the other one? Whatever's in that, yeah. <laughs> I don't do that one. But um, he'll talk about like a raindrop falling. And like, if it's a magnet, you had paper clips. Paper clips would continue to stick on that magnet, right? Is that like that song, Raindrops Are Falling? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. But, well, maybe we'll get back yeah, to that later. Yeah, um, but no, it's like there's a point where it can't pick up good anything one. up. Yeah. Right? It doesn't work like a magnet should anymore. But in the beginning, it's picking up everything, right? Um, petroleum byproducts and pesticides and arsenic and uranium and everything. It's grabbing onto everything because that's its job, right? So when the city gets it, it's literally exhausted. It's completely lost all of its power, right? It can't clean anymore, can't pick anything else up. Well, the city adds a bunch of chlorine to it and gives it to you, the homeowner expects you to clean with it. It doesn't work, right? Our idea is why don't we run it through this refiner, we'll take all of that stuff that it's picked up out, and we'll give it its superpowers back. And I'm gonna show you what I mean. Because all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wash this with eco-refined water, I'm using cold water because the pit temperature of the water, since it's clean water, doesn't affect the cleaning power. And I'm gonna use a bar of soap, and not very much. All we're gonna do is we're gonna rinse off the hard water buildup that's on here. We're not gonna create any new soap scum. We're actually gonna get this glass clean. You can see what that glass looks like over there, right? The one that you cleaned in the dishwasher and we ran underneath your hard water. What you guys will notice with this glove, the water sort of refuses to stick to the side of the cup, mm -hmm. right? It sheets off. And if you put it up next to that cup, it's a big difference. Yeah. Here's the cool thing. When this cup dries, it's going to look exactly like it does right now because there's nothing in the water to leave anything behind. This one's going to have kind of a frosted look with a bunch of hard water spots. And this is cool. Don't get me wrong. It's nice to have clean dishes, right? My wife loves it. But it's everything in your house. The tile and the tubs and the showers and the floors and the faucets and the fixtures, it's your skin. Right? It's your clothes. It's anything that that water touches is going to come out that clean. You got to admit that if all your dishes came out of the dishwasher perfectly clean every time, it would brush your wife, wouldn't it? Yeah. I don't care how your guys um, trial clothes, but they should say something, right? About yeah. something. Yeah. Right? Um, depending on what the customer is. I change it for every customer, but they should say something at the end of every one of these demonstrations that makes them go, yeah, I would. Right? If all your dishes were that clean every time, it would be nice, wouldn't it? Whatever it is, have them try so to close. So, you did the hardness, you did chlorine. I did the hardness, I explained the miniature. I did the precip, I did the chlorine. I went through the book, right? I did a bubble bath, a hand wash, I soaked my rag, oh, I did a glass bath. wash. Now I'm gonna do a taste test. Okay. So how many tests was that, seven? I don't know. So a lot, we're not done yet. Wow. All right, come up here. We're gonna do the Pepsi challenge. Is this when you turn water into wine? You remember the Pepsi challenge? Let, the, let that sell. <laughs> it would. You guys remember the Pepsi challenge, don't you? No. You don't remember the Pepsi challenge? How long ago was this? It's a long yeah, time, yeah, man. Yeah, it was in yeah. the 90s. I should remember it. I was around. It's like they when they were the doing Coke the Pepsi versus the Coke and they blindfolded yeah. people. And I, I'm not yeah. gonna blindfold you, but I got you. It's, it's, <laughs> it's the Pepsi challenge. So here's, here's what I want you to do. Um, I'm gonna have you take a drink of this, okay? And I want you to kind of swish it around your mouth like it was a fine wine. Right, you're gonna notice a couple things. Mm -hmm. One, it's, it's almost sweet, yeah. right? It tastes clean, but if you rub the front of your teeth, they should feel smooth, mm -hmm. right? I want you, you can't really have a drink without a chaser, so I want you to take that yeah, one, sure. right? Mm -hmm. Do the same thing, swish it around your mouth. It's gonna almost tighten up, like dry out your mouth, right? If you right. feel the front of your teeth, mm -hmm. they're gonna feel kind of great. Okay, did it really though? Yeah. Yeah. 
Cause, yeah, didn't. Well, because some of my people say that they don't like to do this one because some of them like, nope, I don't see. Here's I don't, the problem. No you will get one customer, right? That so this is the only test that you can't visually see, right? You have to be objective. The customer does, and when the customer says, "No, I don't taste the difference," I'm like, "Do you smoke cigarettes? There's something wrong with your taste buds." Because it only <laughs> happens every now and then, right? And the amount of times that it that it happens is not worth not doing it. Okay. It's just not. It's really not. It's the You'd most say, oh, powerful. so are you on medicine? Or maybe because sometimes if you're on medicine. Yeah. If you're, I mean, if you're on medication, well, it'll... Well, here's the other thing. If you guys have a bunch of chlorine, the way that the test should be... If you're dying, of course it. you can't. Because yeah. you should have them taste this one. Go ahead and take a sip. Swish around your mouth. It should taste kind of sweet. Right? And the way to really do this is to get this glass of water immediately after. Right? And have them smell it. Take a smell of that. It should smell like a swimming pool. Yeah. Right? But if you let that sit for any amount of time, you won't get that chlorine because it dissipates really quick. Right. But if you let them smell that chlorine right out of the faucet, they'll immediately go, holy yeah, shit, it does. Really smell you can't smell it now. Yeah. So there's a timing on that no, for you sure if you do it right. Taste the difference. Oh, it feels feel, feel the difference on your teeth. And you got to admit, even if you don't normally drink water, that's some pretty good water right there. Isn't it? it is. It is. All right, we're going to do one more thing. Um... I want you guys to uh, play a little imagination experiment with me, and I want you guys to imagine that these are washing machines. I like this one. Oh, let's do our bag first. See, this is what happens when you don't go out the field all the time. <laughs> um, I'm gonna dump this excess water out real quick, okay? We're gonna go back to this washcloth. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> have you ever done this whole demo, Kenny? Mm-hmm. You have? I did for Mary and Roy, yeah. Oh. When you, by the way, one. when you do this one, you want to yeah. like get crazy and wring yeah. every bit yeah. of water you can out of the This dragon. one I actually did with one of their, their washcloths. This one's this yeah. one's my favorite. Yeah. Like, if you don't do this one, you're missing out. Oh, that's nasty, man. What the heck is in there? There's a lot in here. Really? That came yeah. from... Well, this is your clean... Yeah. This is your clean cloth, right? Oh, that's disgusting. So there's a couple things going on here. <coughs> One. Oh, that one, I, we, we don't do that one, do we, Kenny? Yeah, you soak, you, well, I don't no, think our guys, our guys do. probably don't do, but I've done it. It's pretty nasty, right? This is not only oils and stuff that are in your clothes that you can't rinse out because of the hard water because you create this soap scum, um, but there's all these little tiny particles floating around inside of there, and those little, little pieces of fabric, right? Um, if you strain this out, you would have fabric pieces in here, and that's the same stuff that you find in your lint dryer. That's always, all, you have to change it all the time. Just tears up your clothes. The other thing is, what kind of soap did you say you used in your in your laundry? Is Tide? Oh uh, yeah. Think you got it all out? I would I would hope so. You know, right? Yeah. You don't want those harsh detergents in your clothes. Right. Doesn't look like you got it all out, doesn't it? So not only did you not get your clothes clean, but now you have all these detergents in them. And detergents are hot, right? They have acids, right? Really harsh on your skin. I mean, you go look at a box of detergent. Yeah. Right? It tells you to stay away from it. Don't make skin contact. If you do get it on your skin, flush it with water. And you're wearing around. Think about it. You wake up in the morning, you take a shower. Mm -hmm. And swimming pool water. Right? You dry your skin out. You clog all the pores in with your body the, with soap. With a towel. You wipe yourself you, off with You get out. The first thing you grab is a towel. Yeah. Right? And you grind that stuff into your skin. And then you put your clothes on. And you wear those around all day. And then you come home and some people take another shower. And then you hop into sheets that have detergent and all that stuff in it. You roll around in those all, all night. No wonder 80% of the homes that we go to, somebody has a skin or complexion problem. We're in that stuff all day and night. It's crazy, right? All right, so. Now, how hard does the water have to be for really to get that? It doesn't matter, the hardness, the, the soap? Two grains. Wow, okay. And if you go back to their house, and that's why we say, like, and that's one of the things I missed. That's why we tell you at Eco Water that, um, that you only need to use literally a cap about that big of detergent to do your laundry, right? And the first time you do your laundry, don't use any soap at all, yeah. right? You have enough soap in your clothes to do that first load. And then after that, just a little bit to get your clothes cleaner and brighter and whiter than they ever have been before. Really? All right, so. Kevin, you think you still do the cost comparison? Think you can still do the cost comparison? You can? Who taught it to you, baby? <laughs> mm. Who taught it to you? Is this your soap sheet? 
this no, is this no, is the Costco Oh, we're the Sudsy. For every dollar. How much? How much? Uh, so yeah. Imagine. Imagine that that's your washing machine, okay? Let's see. And we're gonna use what's called green soap. It's very similar to uh, like liquid dial. It's just a pure liquid soap. Um, I'm gonna put three drops in each one of these, and I want you to look at this three drops as three scoops of Yolanda detergent, okay? Um, or three squeezes of body wash, or better yet, look at it as three dollars worth of soap. It's three bucks, okay? We're gonna put three dollars in each one of these. One, two, three. One, two, three. Now, before I shake these up or do anything, I want you guys to look. see a difference? You got this one. Hey Steve. Are you there? Steve. Hey buddy. <coughs> I can hear you. Can you hear me? So you include the hour and a half do paperwork too or just the demo? Two hours to do paperwork. Okay. So your demo really is an hour and a half. Wow. The demo's an hour and 10 minutes. Hour and 10 minutes, okay. That's everything, your report building and everything until the paperwork. Yep, and you're still recording me. Do you wanna, oh, I don't want you to do it. 